cutters to wrap. So you teased it at the end of last week. You said, we're going to talk about the difference between a cutter and a cut fastball. Yep. Do we have a cutter and a cut fastball in the three examples that we have? Yeah, I think so. I think we probably don't have the, we don't have like the big, big cutter. Um, We'll talk about it with Darvish, but uh, yeah, I think there's difference. I think the easiest way to kind of categorize them is if a guy's throwing it as one pitch, it's typically going to be a cut fastball. You know, Graham Ashcraft is a good example of that. Glass now has like kind of a cutting fastball. Now I think there's cut fastballs that you're trying to throw on purpose, right? You're trying to cut these balls. And then there's some guys whose arm strokes just naturally do that. I'm trying to get this light out of the way. (laughs) Yeah, no, I, I and then there's a, then there's an off speed pitch cutter, right? Which is essentially a really hard slider or a small slider. Um, Kenley falls into the cut fastball category for me. Okay. Um, we've had plenty of arguments in the locker room about a similar topic is, is a cutter, a fastball or an off speed pitch, right? Like that's a real question. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, you'll see Kenley here run both of them. Yeah. We're, we're going to see Kenley. We're going to see you Darvish and we're going to see Corbin Burns here, but Kenley, I picked two speeds for you. This is him going yeah. inside at 91 as Senzel. And then this is him ending the game against Randy Arozarena with 96 on right. the outer half. So let, let's start 91 inside to Senzel. I mean, obviously, you think cutter, you think cutting movement, glove side, working. You know, this is, I guess, front door, catching the front door against Senzel. Mm-hmm. Why is this such a tough pitch to read for Nick Senzel? Yeah, I mean, you look at where Kenley is on the mound, right? So he's on the far first base side. This ball is going to move six or seven inches to the left, I would bet. Yeah. Meaning it's starting seven inches to the right of where it's ending, the line of it, right? Yeah. And then a normal fastball in the major leagues has four to five inches of run. So if you add that to the perceived, like how it looks, your your initial reaction – he feels like that ball is going to go a foot right of where it is right or where it ends up. Right. So that you see the move with his hips. Um, Just a really tough pit, really hard to throw that ball on that side. I always think, you know, I guess the the layman's way to think of it is it's really easy to move a ball or to get a ball to the side that it's moving. So you see all of us throw sliders to our glove side because it's easy to pull it over there. So to get it on his arm side to cut like that, um, you know, shows you why he has had the career he's had. Now, the next one is what makes it so special, right? Right. Is that it's 96 at times. It's 98 at times when he got his 400. You know, his last pitch was 99 miles an hour. He's been in this game a long time. And and Kenley's also extremely um, extended. He's a huge man, and he gets out there really good. So these things are 96. They seem like they're 100, and then they're cutting – a foot the opposite direction of what you're used to. Yeah. Th- there's something about the, I don't know, I guess like collective testosterone levels when Kenley Jansen is on the Hill, right? Like, yeah. it, and I'm sure that you experienced it in the dugout too. You're fired the hell up, dude. Yeah. I mean, everybody in the ballpark's fired up. Cause you know, you've got this, you know, slow delivery, this elaborate reach out, this, this slow push to the, to the plate. And then all of a sudden he unleashes 96. Like, yeah. is this, I, I like using the term bully ball for some big guys that can just blow shit by you. Is he a bully ball closer with like this cutter? Yeah. I mean, you, you think about part of that is, is his history as a player, right? He was a catcher. So yeah. for him to kind of learn pretty quickly how to throw this cutter, to throw it really hard and how to locate it. And then he runs through the minor leagues, gets to the big leagues really quick after he stops catching. Like he didn't have three years at Vanderbilt throwing to hitters and throwing bullpens and looking at data, right? He kind of came up with, I, I throw this and no one hits it and and did it for 12 years, you know? So, it, you know, hasn't really stopped working for him. So um, I, I think you've seen a little progression in terms of he throws some two-seamers and some sliders. And um, but there for a while, it's kind of cut her, cut her middle up and, and good luck and, um, you know, 400 saves. Yeah. 
dude, 400 saves later, right? Let's jump to two starting pitchers here yep. and two different cuts. This is you, Darvish, here going 91 inside to Willie Calhoun. Yep. Uh, and then Darvish, again, uh, 92 at the knees. So you, Darvish, obviously everybody knows that that he has as, as large a toolbox as anybody in Major League Baseball. And this is just one of those tools. Why is Darvish's cutter so good? Yeah, I, I haven't seen his percentages this year, but kind of thinking back in the last few, this is seemingly like his normal throw, right? Like he doesn't throw as many, you know, he still has 96, 98 in there. He just doesn't do it as much. Yeah. Um, but, you know, he's got one of the bigger, better sliders in baseball. And I think this really sets up that slider for him to where you're kind of always stuck in between 85 and it moving way left or this 90, 92 kind of downer cutter. But I, I've got to think they have – similar spins in some way because he gets so many you know the the second one here you'll see that's like uh the take is telling you that this guy thought this was a slider right? well i will tell you it. yeah that's a 27 rpm pitch or 2700 yeah. rpm pitch yeah so he's the whole time that ball's moving towards him he thinks it's going to move it's going to break way left he thinks it's a huge slider and it's just not it holds its line at um you know, there's a few guys that are that are doing this kind of hard, really hard slider, really slow slider as kind of their mix. And Darvish is one of those. And obviously, he'll throw the little two seamer off of this and the splitter and the curve. You know, he'll do everything. But yeah. this is kind of his baseline throw now. And you know, to do that, he obviously commands it and, and kind of knows what that thing's going to do out of his hand. So I've got my handy dandy prop here, and yeah. I'm, I'm thinking you know, cutter slider, like mm -hmm. obviously it's, it's similar grips, similar, you know, wrist action, right? Like what's the difference here when Darvish is throwing his slider versus his cutter? Like what's he doing differently? Is it a grip thing? Is it a wrist thing? What's going on? Yeah. I don't know too much. I didn't get to talk to him a ton when I played with him and he also wasn't really throwing as many of these as he, he does now. Um, essentially it, similar throw, if you're talking a more traditional slider, now these sweeper sliders, you have to really get around. Yeah. Um, but th this is a ball, this throw is he's kind of offset and it's his hand is more behind the ball than it would be on an 84 mile an hour slider, right? Okay. Essentially, the further supinated you get your hand, the slower the pitch is going to be. The more square you get your hand, the harder it's going to be. So if you think, Think of it that way. Here's a fastball, cutter, slider, curveball, right? Yeah. And you can see how those ranges kind of go down. Um, so this ball is kind of an offset throw, but he spins his a little bit. Kenley's is more of an offset with his hand behind it, and that's why can, he can throw it as hard as he can. Gotcha. Th this is probably, you know, I'm sure he's throwing some 94s with this pitch, but He's going to settle in the 90-92 and with a little spin and that down action to it. And is that all a rep thing? Like, is that a feel thing? I got to feel this in bullpens. I got to feel where my hand is and I got to see the pitch move. Yeah. For me, at least, it's kind of almost the opposite. It's more of um, learning, you know, we can all spin it in this whole range, right? And it's consistently being able to do a certain spot of that, right? I want this yeah. to cut. I don't want it to be a big sweeper and just getting on the side of it doesn't doesn't accomplish that so the feel of it is figuring out like this is this this is that um and then not letting those blend you know he, i think it happened to me in, in some way and that the more cutters i threw it kind of pulls your heater quality or or whatever down because the difference is so small right and where your fingers have to be that if you can't it's just hard to consistently distinguish between those two I think are the hardest two pitches to kind of keep separated yeah and then last guy for you I mean this is the most well-known high speed cutter in the game right yep. now Corbin Burns I, I've got him missing outside to a righty in Casey Schmidt and then I've got him going lower against Pat Bailey here to get the punch out yeah we'll start with the Casey Schmidt one I mean you can see 96 and I think the fan at home can even see how much this thing is moving across right. the so Milwaukee is another one of those places we've talked about where certain views make certain pitches look like that. Yeah. And it's funny. That's what's so cool about having all the data that we have now. We can really look and say, listen, I know this looks giant, you know, as a hitter, 
if you're scouting him and you see this pitch, like that ball looks like it's starting in the inner third. It's probably not. But yeah. if you can look at the number and say, well, it's got six inches. I've seen something maybe sort of similar. It's probably not as hard as Corbin's. Um, that That's how you can kind of, you know, talk yourself into thinking you can have success because, uh, you know, just visually this, this is gigantic. Right. I mean, this looks like a 96 mile an hour slider. Right. Throwing. It's um, not. But obviously he's been super successful with, with this throw and, um, you know, to move it that much and command it the way he does is, is kind of what makes him so special. And we didn't show it on here, but he has the ability to throw it on his arm side as good as anyone too. Yeah. So it's not like you can just set a point and let everything go inside of that, right? Because he can throw it on both sides and um, he does it to righties and lefties, which is difficult to do as well. I, I really don't throw my cutter much to righties. Yeah. Um, but he does with, you know, a lot or with some real regularity and, um, you know, over the past couple of years, he started throwing a lot, a lot more changeups, a lot more two seamers. Figured out how to make the ball go the other way, and and you've seen at least the strikeout numbers, and obviously his his career numbers are pretty, pretty insane. But um, the strikeouts have really gone up because he's been able to make the ball go both ways. For sure. And then this one, I, I find it interesting because you see a lot of, not a lot, but you see that slight vertical drop too. I yeah. mean, you see this kind of fall under the barrel. And, and the first one that I cut here is is elevated as Schmidt. And, yeah. I mean, that thing just looks like it's, you know, kind of sweeping across the zone and not dropping much vertically at all. This one just falls underneath. Pat yeah, there's back. probably, at least for me, and, and I think a lot of guys that cut it and try and cut it with velocity at all, there's a, there's a height that, at least for me, I don't like throwing my cutter at a certain height because the movement, ends up being exactly what a hitter thinks a cutter is going to do. So if they can recognize it and it's at that height, they'll kill it. Gotcha. Um, you know, I, I know I gave up a big homer to Rosario on it in Atlanta in the playoffs a few years ago. Like that's the bad height. Now, if you get it above that or below that, it's going to start acting weird. The one, you know, the first one stays up and cuts, right? And that's a hard, it's just hard to put a barrel on a pitch like that, you think about like the direction to meet that is so difficult. Yeah. And then this one, as you're saying, just the downer action to it and it being low means his hand got a little more on top and, and that's what you come out with. So, um, yeah, three pretty good pitches. Three really good pitches. All right. We will, uh, I don't know. You got a pitch off the top of your mind for next week. <sighs> what have we done? Have we done curveball yet? Uh, we haven't done curveball. We done fastball slider cutter curveball next week. Yeah, we'll do curveball. All right, I want to man. look at that one kid, uh, Duran. It's throwing like a 90 mile hour curveball. Freak show. Joe on Duran. Joe right. Kelly, too. Joe Kelly. Yep. I love it. Walker Bueller, you are the man. Safe flying back today, and we'll talk to you next week. Cool. All right, guys. Thanks.